cybersecurity and 5G last year. It was October 2019 when it came out this document risk assessment of 5G networks. Uh, it was published by <coughs> this NIS network in <coughs> information security uh, group, cooperation group. Uh, it was actually made by cybersecurity All and five European states, year. countries. Uh, they first made national level risk assessment and then uh, NS, NIS cooperation group summarized it to this public <coughs> publication. Uh, the other one is cybersecurity of 5G networks toolbox of risk mitigating measures. There are mitigating measures, there are responses to this uh, Risk, risks found on those that risk uh, assessment NIS, NIS. and I will talk briefly of both of these documents and I try to, to, to give public a simplified <coughs> publication uh, view what uh, is said the on those documents is cyber security of 5G about 5G and cyber toolbox of risk mitigating measures. Uh, I really there recommend for you to read the, the whole there document. Are you can easily to find this, them uh, on that risk link risks on the, on the slide that Chris, risk uh, assessment this, 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 this publication. And I will talk briefly of both of these documents and I will try to, to, to give a, public, a simplified <coughs> publication. Uh, here he is. We've what the picture uh, on those documents is cybersecurity about 5G, 5G and cybersecurity. Actually, the, the, here is the risk assessment and for 5G and uh, this really cybersecurity for 5, 5G network. The whole documents uh, you can easily publications find on that risk link risks on the, on the slides that Chris risk uh, and is, this I will try to uh, summarize these really two publications. Of both of these documents. And I Here is the diagram which has pretty bit everything on one slide. I will talk now about. There is on the very bot <coughs> top, there is the risks, the risks found on this first publication. Uh, the risks may be mitigated by these mitigating measures. And there are two types of these measures, strategic measures and technical measures. Uh, we will go through some of them. Uh, on strategic size, there is of course regulatory powers, but there is also talking about diversification, about suppliers, and sustainability and diversity of 5G supply and supply chain, value chain. Technical measures, of course, we need to have network security. We need to have 5G-specific network security and requirements to relevant suppliers, processes, and equipments, and so on. And the first group we need is this, this supporting actions. On this next slide, you can find those risks. As I said, these risks are summarized from states and countries of EU. Uh, and on the most summarized version, we can find nine risks, those R1 to R9. There are five categories or, or scenarios uh, which are including these uh, nine risks. 
Uh, first, we have misconfiguration of networks. It means uh, exploiting poorly configured systems or and architecture. Maybe it may happen as a state actor penetrates to someone's 5G network with, with uh, via its external interfaces. On R2, we have lack of access control. Maybe a subcontractor who has applied, uh, who has given administrator privileges uh, is able to perform uh, some adverse actions leading to confidentiality or, or integrity or availability breaches. R3 is low production product quality. Maybe some Espanyanas, some is done by state or state packet actors uh, using some exploits, mal <coughs> malware to abuse poor quality network components. R4 may be an ex example of this dependency on any single supplier. Uh, maybe some over network operator sources a large amount of the, of the network components from single supplier or services from single supplier. That is definitely source of risks. On R5, uh, we have state interface through for 5G super chain, a hostile state actor may exercise pressure over a supplier to have access to sensitive network assets and so on. R6, state interference through 5G super, like, no, R6 was exploitation of 5G networks by organized crime or organized crime group targeting end users. R7, significant disruption of critical infrastructure services. R8, failure in electricity supply. It may happen that there are malicious hackers uh, or maybe even without hackers, it may happen that there are massive outages of power supply due to natural disasters. That is also risk uh, we need to consider also in 5G networks. Or R9, uh, IoT exploitations, uh, someone maybe state packet actor takes control of low security devices like these IoT sensors. Here were well, the nine risks. Then I will talk a little bit about threat actors and relevance of risks in 5G, but uh, here is few very familiar terms used in security, in cybersecurity, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I think all of you know this, uh, but uh, very briefly, confidentiality means that there, those who have authorization to access to data is able to do it. And of course, those who not, are not authorized are not able to do it. Integrity means that the information format is true and correct and in, it's not, not have been changed on storage or trans, trans, uh, 
mission situations. And availability means that uh, information and resources are available to those who need them. And now we can check this picture. This is also taken from this risk assessment document. Uh, here are threat actors. Uh, <clears throat> six of those. Uh, and the circles, the out, out, outer circle, uh, which has grade five, means the highest relevance of risk. And in the middle, there is no risk. It's the zero in the middle. And according to these publications from EU state, nation state or nation state pack, packet actors are the most relevant with highest relevance. Uh, Actually, for all of these, for compromised confidentiality, compromised availability, and compromised integrity, uh, activist, individual hackers or activist activistic groups uh, or accidentals, uh, they are not very important if we are talking about these risks. Here is strategic measures taken out from this, this mitigation uh, publication of NIS. I go a little bit backward for a moment. Uh, on this picture, we had on the, in the middle these mitigating measures, and we had two of these types, strategic measures and technical measures. And now we will go through these uh, stra strategic measures. They are numbered SM1 to SM8. There is eight of to get all together. The first one means that it's needed to strengthen the role of national authorities. Second one needs that we should perform audits and op operators on operators regarding also information from operators. SM3, assessing the risk profile of supplier, suppliers, and also applying restriction, restrictions for suppliers. Uh, those, of course, those ones which are considered to be high risk, uh, including example, for example, necessary exclusions to effective mitigated risks for key assets. Uh, SM4, controlling the use of managed service providers, MSPs, and of course, also equipment suppliers. Uh, SM5, ensuring the diversity of suppliers, all kind, SM6, strengthening the resilience at national level, SM7, identifying key assets, and also fostering a diverse and sustainable 5G ecosystem in whole EU. And SM8, maintaining and building diversity and EU capacities in future network technologies. These were the strategic measures. We have another group of measures against these risks from 
TM1 to TM10, there is 10 technical measures. Uh, the first one is for ensuring the application of baseline security requirements. The second one, ensuring and evaluating the implementation of security measures in 5G, especially in existing 5G standards and so on. TM3 ensures strict access control. TM4 increases the security of fertilized network functions. This uh, virtualization is a very important part of 5G networks. We need to use virtualized network functions, VNFs. TM5 ensure secure 5G network management and also operation and monitoring. Sixth, reinforce physical security. Seven, reinforce software integrity, update and patch management. TM8, we need to reinforce the security standards in suppliers processes. And the last one, uh, no, there is two, two of left, the TM9, using EU certifications for 5G network components and TM10 EU certification for other non-specific ICT products. Then there are some supporting actions. Of course, uh, these are only if needed. Uh, there are 10 of those reviewing and developing guidelines, reinforcing testing and auditing capabilities, supporting and shape, shaping 5G standardization, developing guidance on the implementation of security measures, ensuring application of standard technical and organizational security measures, exchanging best practices on implementations of strategic measures in, part, in particular, uh, and improving coordination in incident response and crisis management. And the eighth one, conducting audits uh, of interdependencies between 5G networks and other critical services. The ninth one, enhance cooperation, coordination, and information sharing. And the last one, ensuring 5G deployment project supported with public funding. Now we have three components mitigating. Uh, we need have the strategies, strategies, uh, actions, measures. We have <clears throat> technical measures, and we have these supporting actions. From these, we will form a risk mitigation plan. Now we will summarize all together. Uh, there was nine main risks mentioned on this document, EU coordinated risk assessment report. And why uh, we need also this risk mitigation plan to check all the combinations needed. It may happen that uh, possible combination of strategic and technical measures together with these supporting actions are used to mitigate, mitigate a specific security risk. Uh, aim is to provide guidance 
to most relevant and high impact mitigations or measures based on evaluation. Uh, we need to reflect the importance of combining measures in appropriate manner. And we need also to check the order. There are some measures, let's say, application of enhanced security of applications of this uh, managed network objects, MNOs. They require necessary precondition that regulatory authorities have, have powers to define and impose such obligations, as well as monitor and audit their implementation. Uh, with this risk mitigation plan, we have a specific scale. Uh, it is this scale of expected effectiveness. It is that colored line there. The red end means that risk is considered very high degree. And of course, the green one means very low related risk. And of course, we have all the colors between those. We have mess <coughs> risks with very high, very high, medium, low, and so on, these risks. And we also need to uh, con consider what is the implementation factors. Uh, it means uh, how much are resource costs, example, if some implementation is very costful, we need to take this also under consideration. Uh, sector specific economic impacts. We need to also broader economic and or societal, societal impacts. We need to check these kind of things also as implementation factors for this risk mitigation. And also on these documents are the time frames, how long it takes to implement. Is it short term, medium term, or long term project? And now we can summarize all together these risk mitigation plans. To be sure that we remember where we started. Here is the picture of this, uh, these risks. You remember we have nine risks, which are in five scenario. The first scenario was insufficient security measures. Next one, risk related to 5C supply chain. Uh, the third one of this scenario, uh, related to these uh, ways of working of these main threat actors. Fourth one, risk scenarios related to interdependencies between 5G networks and other critical systems. And the fifth one was risk scenarios related to end user devices. And here is the risk mitigation plan, actually this is the first half of it, where we have these strategic measures. Uh, on the top here, we can find the risks, the nine risks, R1, R2, 3, 4, 5, and up till R9. I hope you can see this is a little bit small. Uh, 
we have first one of them was misconfiguration of networks. The second second one lack of as access and so on. Uh, on the uh, bottom here we have this SMs. Here is our SM one, two, three. These are the measures, the strategic measures. SM1, SM2, 3, 4, 5, up till SM8. They were grouped to these scenarios. Here are the scenarios A, B, C, and D. Regulatory powers, uh, regulatory powers, uh, third party suppliers, diversification of suppliers, and sustainability and diversity of 5G supply and supply chain. We have here the time frame, regulatory powers. This is a short term time frame. Here are also potential implement action factors, these action factors. And then we, we have these strategic measures. And with colors, <coughs> The colors means this effect, expected effectiveness. With colors, we have here marked uh, what is the expected effectiveness. This is uh, this the diagram is made to help to have the big picture to. Uh, make this risk mitigation plan. Uh, let's start with this right hand side. There are uh, misconfiguration of networks and lack of access con controls. All of these are green. It means that accepted I mean, effectiveness is very high. At no, least, making constantly a if we are talking about so we, SM1 we and SM2, which are the title of the hackathon, that how we can transfer the emotions uh, virtually. Now in the current uh, challenging situation globally, where we are socially kind of disconnected to each other, yeah. or imagination, how we deal with this uh, component, component of uh, emotion. Pick and there's lots those of opportunities right now because measures like so that there is uh, tools for all risks. The tools here we have the strategic tools, eight of them, but we had also we have also uh, technical tools, and when we combine this picture and the picture diagram with technical uh, measures, we can select what measures we need to cover each of these risks found from this EU level risks assessment of 5G networks and solutions. We can see here that these strategic measures are not good solutions for the last two, this R8 and R9. Example, this electric, we, lost, we will lose electricity, or there will be a huge vulnerability or exploitations in IoT systems, IoT sensors. Here is uh, not at all of those colors. Uh, let's uh, jump to the other, other picture. Uh, here, we, here was again the strategic measures but I, and also the risks, these risks from R1 to R9. But here is the other half of the picture of the diagram. On this diagram, we have these technical measures. The risks are still here on the top. The 
nine risks found by EU level assessment, risk assessment, but the mitigation, the solutions, here are 11 of these technical measures. And these technical measures are grouped to these uh, scenarios. We have here network security baseline measures on the first scenario with uh, technical measures one and two. We have this scenario B, network security 5G specific measures, which has actually five of these technical measures, technical measures three, four, five, six, and seven. And we have scenario C, requirements related to suppliers, processes, and equipments. And there we have three technical measures, TM8, 9, and 10. And the last one is scenario resilience and continuity. Uh, there is technical measure 11. And on this map, we have now again these colorful scores, and they are uh, guiding us selecting those uh, measures to make it mitigate all the risks. We can see big from this picture example, R4 here, dependency in uh, single dependency on a single supplier. This is a huge, huge risk, risk if we are dependent on, on a single supplier of some component example. Uh, these measures are not, uh, here is only white scores. It means that we need to mitigate that risk uh, using this toolbox, using these strategic measures. Let's go back to the strategic measures. We were talking about R4, risk four. Here was the set static measures. And here are these green and R4 is here. We can use regulatory powers, diversification of suppliers, or scenario D, sustainability and diversity of 5G supply and value chains. Of course, these are only headers. These are only words. This is the uh, uh, so uh, tight version as it is possible to make. Of course, this is written out on the documents, the, on the publications. Uh, but uh, these risk mitigation plans, this is uh, one of them, uh, tries to give uh, guidance for picking those measures, those tools, mitigating those risks found. Okay. Uh, there are areas where these technical measures are working very fine. Uh, risk R6, R7, and especially against this scenario P, network security 5G specific measures. Okay. And here is was the list of these technical measures from TM1 to TM10. Uh, I have time to a little uh, uh, start for some different approach to this cybersecurity in 5G. I have a few minutes left. 
they, these are taken from this kind of book, 5G system design. Uh, this is totally different approach to this uh, same question about uh, uh, cybersecurity in, in 5G. And this is uh, just very beginning. As you know, there are different main services types for, for 5G. There are three of them. EMPP, Enhanced Mobile Broadband, URLLC, Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communications, MMTC, Massive, Massive Type Communications. I'm not going through those, but I will point out that these are quite different compared to each other. The uh, requirements are very different on each of these groups. And if we are building this 5G networks, we need especially two things. One of them is SDN and the other one is NFV. SDN is a software defined networking and NFV is virtual network function. I'm not going through those either now, uh, but they are very important component of modern networks, all of them, uh, not only these 5G networks, also normal IT networks are using these specific technologies, network function with virtualization and software defined networking. They will give us flexibility and reduce cost they will deeply impact the networks. But there comes several additional security considerations. And we need to automate the security and the management. Because the complexity is getting much more high we will have multi-tenant environments a lot in 5G and it gives new opportunities for hackers to find vulnerabilities. One example, here is trust domain in traditional networks. Let's say image that this is home, even home network. It's connected to, uh, did I skip? No, I think someone, something is missing, but uh, on, on home network or, or small office network, everything is connected to internet through one internet connection. And all the packets are going, uh, let's say, let's say uh, as uh, on one tube, that one internet connection. Uh, we can divide it into more small, smaller, uh, smaller trust domains using virtualization. We can even uh, use this kind of virtual, uh, I mean, vertical security and trust domains. We will slice the network smaller pieces. We will separate with virtualization those components, those networks from each other totally. Let's just say that we have an surveillance, camera surveillance network on our, on our uh, home 
and we have normal internet uh, network and we have a, a streaming network for for modern uh, television and so on we can separate those also on network level we have virtualized network infrastructure from each of them we are talking about in this case vertical security and trust domains we are also using the term slices it is exact actually same as this uh, earlier we slice the network to uh, smaller pieces and of course if we have very many different types of these uh, services running on our 5g network uh, we need to slice it for each of them and what about the cyber security of these solutions these are this is a new architecture we need new properties we need low latency and so on security is very critical here with shared resources and it is quite hard it's harder to do like than all type physical resources the solutions is this virtualization and also high level of management security management we need overall security architectures we need security in design it should be in the very beginning before we start and i think i have used all of my time i will stop now stop now okay uh there are some chat on the on the group Yeah, there was a question, was there any 5G security incident happen in Finland till now? Uh, uh, there are several incidents, but especially in 5G, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I think that was enough. Now, I hope you got something out of my presentation, at least. Thank you very much.